Hi, I'm Colin G. West. Some science facts are so cool that once you learn them, you can't unthink them. Next time you're heating up a plate of cold pizza, I bet you're going to think about this. All right, this week I have to start with a confession. I actually think leftover pizza is better when it's cold, but I still love microwaves. They're great for heating up hot pockets, for defrosting meat, warming up a cup of coffee. There's practically nothing a microwave can't do. Of course, there's one well-known exception. No metal in a microwave, right? Well, actually, it's not quite so simple. Okay, for the record, I don't want anyone to put forks and stuff in a microwave. Especially not if you are a lawyer, or if you know a lawyer, or if you've heard of lawyers. Basically, don't sue me, please. That said, you might be surprised to find out that there are some times when you can put metal in a microwave. In fact, there are some times when you should put metal in a microwave. There are even times when you probably have put metal in a microwave. You just might not have realized it at the time. But I'm getting ahead of myself. First, let's take a moment to talk about how microwaves work when you're not screwing them up with a fork that you forgot about. Microwave ovens are named after, well, microwaves. A kind of electromagnetic waves that are just like radio waves, only a little bit higher frequency. Here in Santa Cruz, the most familiar type of wave is an ocean wave. Out here by the cliffs, surfers float in the water waiting to catch a big one. But most of the waves aren't surfing waves. Instead, they just make the surfers bob up and down every time they go past, pushing them around without totally wiping them out. Works the same way back here in the kitchen. The electromagnetic waves in the microwave have the same effect on the molecules of your food that the water waves have on the surfers. They push them around and make them twist and turn in place and bump into each other. And as it turns out, this is exactly what it means for something to heat up. Its molecules get all jiggly and fast moving. And next thing you know, your frozen burrito is ready to go. These waves can push around food molecules, like water, sugar, and fats, because they affect things with electric charges. Water molecules, for example, essentially have a positive charge on one side and a negative charge on the other. So the oscillations of the wave keep pulling the two sides back and forth. But a metal, on the other hand, is full of little negatively charged electrons that can move around as much as they please. This is why metals can be so much trouble inside a microwave oven. The microwaves that shake up the water molecules in your food can actually push the electrons inside a metal into dangerously unstable configurations. This is extra true for metals that have pointy bits or sharp edges, like a fork or a crinkled up piece of aluminum foil. Of all the metal things you could put in a microwave, these are some of the worst. The shape of these edges tends to force the electrons in together in a way that's kind of like forcing water into a balloon. In other words, you can do it for a little while, but the pressure just keeps building and building until at some point, the whole thing just breaks down. When a water balloon breaks, you just get a splash. But when a pocket of electrons finally breaks free from a metal, you get a spark. A miniature bolt of lightning inside your microwave. That can start a fire or even blow a hole inside of the oven. It's not a good situation, especially, and I can't stress this enough, if you're the type of person who gets dumb ideas from YouTube videos and then files lawsuits. Okay, so forks are definitely a no-no. Okay, but hang on a second. The inside of the microwave is entirely lined with metal, which you might think is kind of strange if you're not supposed to put any metal in there. But if you look closely at it, you'll see that the manufacturers have taken care to make the inside a smooth, flat surface without any pointy bits. It's been engineered to allow the electrons to move around without creating too much heat or potential for a spark. Instead, the walls perform a very important function by reflecting the microwaves, helping to keep them focused on heating up your food rather than running them up, heating up random stuff in your kitchen. But there's another time you can put metal in a microwave, and you've probably done it if you've ever heated up something like a pot pie or a hot pocket. You may have noticed that they come with these weird cardboard wrappers that are often gray on the inside. That's actually a thin layer of metal that the manufacturer intentionally wants you to put inside a microwave. You see, this isn't just any old metal. It's a type of metal, or metal composite, called a susceptor, which is a material with a very specific property. When it's exposed to microwave radiation, the electrons inside get pushed around all over the place. But that's not the special part. That happens to every metal. But in this material, the moving electrons don't have much space to maneuver. They bump into one another and create lots and lots of heat. So when you microwave the hot pocket, the susceptor creates a layer of intense heat right next to the crust. It's an attempt to get the microwave to function more like a toaster oven, where the heat elements would be pressed right up next to the food and can toast the outside into a crisp, crunchy crust. 
So in this case, it's not forbidden to put metal in a microwave. It's actually essential to get the result that you want. But you don't have to take my word for it. Next time you're making a Hot Pocket, try it without the sleeve on the outside and see for yourself. It makes for kind of a mushy lunch, but it also makes for a great science experiment. So that's it for this week. If you enjoyed the show, subscribe to the channel for more science thoughts you can't unthink. Thanks to Joe from Colorado, who wanted to know what he should think about when he's using metal around a microwave. If there's a part of your day that you'd like to see featured on the show, tweet it at me with the hashtag, what should I think about when? You can find me on Twitter at, at Colin G. West, because I am Colin G. West. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.